Good morning, evening, afternoon. I'm Tato Cat. Welcome to my channel. Today we're playing Echoes of this nine pin game. Previously, uh, we had the regrettable battle that I finally won, I guess. And um, found out there's more people down below, and without really a choice, we decided to go check it out and save them and to run into General Yoshida. And uh, General Yoshida is working with Songbird. Kind of. And, uh, we just finished hearing his speech. And that is where we left off. So let's continue. I suppose there's no use in talking about it now, though. You've come to kill this old man. Not to hear what he has to say. The general reaches behind his back and unsheaths what appears to be a katana with a glowing blade. He has a samurai lightsaber! <laughs> with a flick of his wrist, however, it ignites in a blinding flash of white. It explodes, apparently. Before I can react, the edge of the sword explodes into a hypersonic shockwave, blanketing the surrounding machinery with electrified sparks. It sounds like Hypnotoad! Oh no! Ah! I'm gonna change this thing a bit, because for me it's not super loud, but I bet for you guys it's super loud. Here you go. You spoke with insight, Yoshida. Of honor and truth. I expected better from you than petty theft. The Kamigari, <clears throat> the Kamigari, is a powerful blade, Misaki. After what we've done, do you honestly believe we deserve to hold such power? Can you say the same about yourself after what you've done? After you had loyal Black Star soldiers burned to death by energy weapons for making the same mistakes that you did? Perhaps not. Did not think that through when I did that. <laughs> but you no longer hold a monopoly on that power. You surpassed your mother long ago Ojo Sama, in both strength and honor. But if she demands that my life be taken, I would rather die by your hand than live as one of her instruments. Oh, we're gonna fight the old man. Just him, though? Elite General. Hiro Yoshida. Oh, Emmy's talking now. Sorry, Emmy. Listen one to ground team. Our facial recognition network has identified the man in front of you as General Hiro Yoshida of Black Star Security. Thank you. We already know that, Emmy. He told us. And I'm amused by... <laughs> I know it's not supposed to look like this, but it looks like a shocked face over here. This is systems online, Rui, and it's like 0.0, .0 TP, but look. <laughs> it's a very serious situation, and he just stopped getting distracted. His service record that states that he served as flag officer of Black Star Sentinel Branch since 2039 and notes a specialized proficiency in close quarter combat. I 
feel like this is all info that Miki can give us. Satomi's giving you the green light to engage, but don't let him get too close. You'll want to take a, you want to avoid taking any hits from that weapon until we know what it's capable of. Eight, nine, get your med kits ready and show her what this cell can do. Give him hell, you two. Okay, first of all, I'm not trying to show anybody anything. I'm just trying to not die. I didn't want to fight most of these people in the first place. Operatives, get away from that sword before it burns through your armor. And let you get hit with it? Yeah, I planned on doing that the last battle. Um, I wondered what would happen if I just let him. Miki take all the hits and if I just let her get killed by the enemy <laughs> I sound so mean but she's um, I guess she has some information for us you know but but um I feel like that battle could have been avoided if she wasn't like you must die now or whatever don't worry. He's not the only one here who studied the blade. I was going to stay stupid enough to use the blade. Misaki reaches forward, two swords on her back, and with one sweeping motion, unsheaths them both in an explosion of light. This is odd thinking this now, but Satomi had three swords, and now I'm just thinking of that one dude from One Piece that had the three swords. Like, he had one in his mouth, and like two in his hand. That's how I'm imagining her fighting now. Okay, right, back to the action. Defend yourself, General. Did she do any damage? Of course not. After taking three hits to the chest, General Yoshida merely steps back and chuckles. <laughs> Your mother taught you well, I see. What do these things? What does? No, that's part of the thing. What does that mean? Turret arm. Okay, it's telling me. Okay, what do the skulls mean? Turret armor. It's now okay. So what? We had to fight the turrets now? Really? Do you see what you did, Miki? No help at all. The general snaps his fingers, signifying the turrets above him to lock onto Misaki. So and then they just oh, that's nice. Unfortunately for you. No, indeed. <laughs> You'll need to pay more attention to your surroundings. <sighs> Miki. Like, Rui noticed the guns above. I'm sure she had to have too. The general moved in for another strike, but Misaki recovers from the beam and parries it. In time, sparking a clash so intense that I can barely keep track of whose sword is doing what. What I don't notice, however, is a rapid change of color in the barrels. What I do notice, however, is a rapid color change in the barrels, which fade from white, hot, to smoldering red. And finally, cool down to a point where ice crystals form on the surface. They appear to be made of some sort of ultra-conductive material, easily cooled by whatever low-temperature superfluid 
is circulating past it. Despite a lack of exposed heat, of heat sinks or weak points to target, I aim my heaviest rifle at one of the turrets and pull the trigger. The smoke clears and to my dismay, I see that none of my shots have done any damage. Moreover, something around the turret shimmers in the air at the point of impact, like multiple rivers flowing on top of one another in perfect hemisphere. I must have hit some kind of exotic barrier design to insulate the turret's armor from small arms fire. Didn't you say she got her biggest weapon? After a second of deliberation, I decided to trigger the silent alarm on my gauntlet and request reinforcements from the commander. Until they get here, however, I'll need something to keep those turrets busy. Before she shot herself, the Black Star officer mentioned taking out some similar turrets with heavy weapons and incendiary grenades. But how the hell could they have gotten grenade through that kind of barrier? Unless they didn't need to get a grenade through the kind of barrier. You face me with a coward's weapon, General. Is this what treason offered you? The, the, death the, death the destruction of your honor in exchange for these Zankoku Buki. My treason offered me wisdom, peace, and truth. Uh, yes, it is all for the truth. That is what he's fighting for. I mean, I did kind of want to offer him peace, but he is he is quite um thinking extremist thoughts. All which, even with your honor, you failed to provide. Then, hope what little you've achieved was worth it. Misaki handling herself- Misaki's handling herself well. Is what Hisao says, and I did not read that quite right. I'm impressed. As- Riveting as the sta stalemate is, however, it might be wise for us to intervene before she gets broiled from the inside by those energy turrets. Shut up, Hisao. I'm trying to take them out, okay? You wouldn't happen to you have... You wouldn't happen to you have? You wouldn't happen to have a rocket launcher on hand, would you? No? Would you? Do you really think someone with a rocket launcher would go around asking others if they had a rocket launcher? Well... There goes plan A. With my free hand, I draw an energy support module from my belt and begin taking it apart with my repair gun. You see the CSM? One of my instructors in advanced... Just in advanced? Okay. Told me <laughs> it's Outer wall is designed to be heat resistant to keep the plasma containment torrid 
inside from releasing all of its energy at once. If that happens, there's enough plasma in here to produce a 20 million Kelvin fireball of death for around a microsecond or so. But the cell's superstructure has to get touched by something hot enough. I hold up a grenade. Something like this. I'm no engineer, but a well-placed grenade should be enough to trigger said fireball of death and burn away those protective fields. Even if it doesn't, heat and energy weapons mix like water and oil, so if all goes well, there's a good chance that we'll still be able to slow down the cooling cycle. Let me get this straight. You want to attach a grenade to the exposed plasma cell of an ESM, rig it to explode, and throw it at the enemy as a makeshift bomb. You have a better idea? Of course I have a better idea. But this plan of yours sounds far more entertaining. I'm not entirely open to the idea of coiling collateral damage, but is it really possible to get the containment toroid hot enough? Toroid. Toroid? I bypass the fuse on the grenade and attach it to the surface of the plasma cell, setting the apparatus to detonate on impact. We're about to find out. I mean, what could go wrong, really? <laughs> I peer out from cover, gripping the payload tightly in my left hand. The nearest turret takes notice of my sudden movement and pivots towards me. Ice crystals inch towards the lip of the barrel as I wind back and take aim. The tracking system has found its target, but so have I. So many options. Should I throw the bomb or throw the bomb? I guess we're going to throw the bomb. A bolt of sound and silver hurtles through the air at hypersonic speed, turning head over heels like a landmine from a slingshot. So is she left-handed? That's cool. Me too. Time slows to a crawl. And just as my slapdash firebomb is about to go off a turret fires one last beam like an arrow made of pure light it pierces the device soaring at it dead on danger music the dry warehouse air erupts around me with force and luminosity and measure sufficient to rival the fury of the sun. It does sound really cool though, the fireball of death. Two white hot glowing metal carcasses dangle from the ceiling dripping with turning the music down so some songs are quite quiet and you can't hear them and then other songs are loud like this I feel like that happens in every game I play like some of them are really quiet and then next thing I know I have to turn the volume all the way down because it's like way higher in volume and I don't know why <laughs> Uh, 
I lost my place. I'll just start from the beginning. Two white hot glowing metallic carcasses dangle from the ceiling, dripping with molten metal in an upside down sea of burning steel and incandescent fire. That sounds cool. Not wanting to waste my time, I open fire on both of them. The first inoperable slag heap ruptures from the ceiling and comes crashing down in a shower of pyroclastic sparks. The second nearly falls on Yoshida, nearly falls on Yoshida, but he dodges in time, giving Misaki a much needed opening to strike him in the torso with her long scythe. She has a scythe? Not a sword? I thought she had two swords. Where did the scythe come from? Is it a sword scythe? A swife? Wait, that actually worked? <laughs> is he shocked at the fact that it worked or is he shocked about the fact that we're shocked? I inadvertently lock eyes with Hisao, who seems legitimately infuriated by the freak stroke of luck both of us just witnessed. Before I can tell him that I'm as shocked as he is, however. Oh, what? I'm interrupted by a nearby fire alarm. Water from overhead. Sprinkle from an overhead sprinkle system begins to drip down my visor. I nod to Sal. He nods back in silent agreement ready to ambush the general. Now that the turrets are gone, there's nothing blocking our advance. Okay, are we gonna fight him now? It's time to win this. Sorry for the sniffles. Um, you know what though? I don't really feel as bad killing the general. I feel like he could have ended this more peacefully than than he initially did. Like he had a chance to not sacrifice as many of his own people as as he did, and he chose not to do that. Um, and for fighting for truth, I feel like he had some selfish goals here. And so I feel less bad about taking out the general than I did taking out uh uh Katori, Katori, uh, whatever her name was, uh. The one who had a one-legged pet bird. Diba Kisao has ambushed the enemy. Left click to continue. Rui can now construct thermal bombs while in combat to deal with unusually strong enemies. Composed of one ESM and one incendiary grenade, a thermal bomb strips away the enemy's thermal resistance upon detonation, making them more vulnerable to thermal... Thermal... Oh no, the thing's in the way. Can I... Nope. I assume it says damage. To assemble and throw one, select you special item during the first phase of Rui's turn. Cool, let's make a bomb. Dead things I should not say out loud ever. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, yep, I sounded way too excited about that. The enemies thermal resistance has been reduced to 85 points. Oh, that was great. Let's do that again. Oh, I can't. Oh, use ability. Oh, do I use... No, use special item. 
They're back, so I can't do that yet. All right. Use weapon. Oh, I should back up, right? I can't back up. Well, that's not great. I'm supposed to avoid being this close to him. Use this one! I need to back up. Back up. Dismount. Yep. Oh, I can't back up and do that. Alright. So, um, use item. I can only do it once. Uh-huh. Looks like I can only do it once. Maybe it's one of those things where it's like every four. What's the skull thing for? I still don't know what that means. Oh, it's a cool weapon. Misaki's armor took... She always seems to take that amount of damage. Use special item. Yep. Do 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 do. Boom. Oh, now it's down to 80 points. Fire weapon. seem to do something. Uh, I guess this one. Maybe I should have backed up a little bit. Is Misaki going to die? <laughs> Use special item. I hope I have enough incendiary grenades to... Like, do this. Where's the one at 30? Here it is. I guess they all technically do something, but sometimes it seems like they, some do more than others. Like, every time I get into a battle, I end up having to end the episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this one. Ah, oh, he's close to us again. Retreat. We'll retreat about meters and meters. That shoots Misaki, and they're only shooting Misaki, <laughs> which is understandable. <laughs> oh, seventy points. I don't know what happens when it gets to zero, but it seems like something cool will happen.
Alright, uh, we'll continue this battle in the next episode. We'll see what happens when the, when the thing gets to zero. How much exploding this will happen.